The Russian armed forces are using the poison bullet in the Ukraine conflict. The famed poison bullet. You can't eat it. The round used by Soviet forces in Afghanistan Stupid was economy. absolutely devastating. Joining me today again is our guest lecturer and prolific science YouTuber, Garen Thumb, along with his newly crowned field doctor, Charlie. Okay. Together, we'll take a deep dive into Russian's 7N6 round and compare it to some other common military rounds to determine what makes it so deadly. At some point, the Soviet engineered 545 by 39 millimeter round earned the nickname of the poison bullet. Not because it's literally poisonous. For example, if you drain a certain amount of venom from the fangs of a diamondback rattler into a hollow tip bullet, you really only need one shot. But because the projectile has a tendency to tumble, turning sideways upon entering soft tissue, moving erratically inside the body and causing a very large wound cavity. Generally speaking, the larger the wound cavity, the greater the chance of internal damage. Professor Garand? Let's get this going. Firing. Thank you, sir. And might I add, your high-speed cameras look fantastic. During Vietnam, when we were stomping commies, this actually was not part of the regular kit that we carried over there, so. Interns, I hope you're taking notes. One of the reasons they call it the poison bullet, a lot of yawing, so yawing means as that bullet begins to tumble, it's a very unstable round once it hits the tissue. That's right, Garrett. So this is what it looks like when a bullet yaws in flesh. Yaw! It's like the bullet is actually doing a backflip inside of the tissue while still moving. Ay caramba. We see an extended temporary cavity and a pronounced permanent cavity effect. The temporary cavity effect is dependent on bullet yaw and bullet velocity. Think of it like the wake in the water behind a boat or the shock wave that extends outwards from the path of the bullet. And while ballistics researcher Martin Fackler has suggested that most internal organs and tissues may be too flexible to be severely damaged by the temporary cavitation effect of the yawing, everyone is susceptible to the permanent cavitation effect. You know, the hole in your chest. I mean, crap, man, look at that. If you'll notice, that thing curved right out of the ballistics gelatin. A good curve is always something that you want to have. Since anything caught in the path of the bullet inside the permanent wound cavity is going to suffer severe damage. A close-up of the bullet reveals a sinister piece of hardware. The 545 by 39 makes use of a boat tail design to reduce drag, has a hollow air space at the point of the bullet, and a lead plug in the base. These design specifications move the bullet's center of gravity to the back contributing to its tumbling power. The hollow airspace also makes the bullet's point prone to deformation when the bullet strikes anything solid, which induces the yaw effect. The bullet is designed so that when it leaves the muzzle, it has no yaw. Ideally, it goes straight. Straight until it makes contact with the target. Then its performance becomes much more erratic. Just look at this shot. Garen's aim is straight and true. But as soon as it hits you, I want that thing to start wobbling as much as it possibly can, up, down, left, right. And in this clip, the bullet does just that, literally exiting the ballistic gel block from the top side. I'm beginning to think that getting shot in the side of the torso with a poison bullet would be especially brutal. If we look at the size of these ballistic blocks, they're about the width of a human torso. And the 7N6 bullet has a tendency to yaw and curve maybe 20 centimeters in an angle of maybe 35 to 45 degrees. Imagine an entry wound here and an exit wound somewhere over here with everything in between turned into mush. That's a medical definition, by the way. The kinetic force of the projectile will easily penetrate and macerate any soft tissue with which it comes into contact. And since the projectile is tumbling while moving at a high rate of speed, it is literally like having someone toss a miniature blender inside of your body. I mean, the results are in. This bullet was designed to tear up the insides of its target, increasing wounding potential. And that is exactly what it does. Here, Professor Garen stacks several ballistic blocks on top of each other to see just how much it can do. See how it goes. Due to excessive yawing, it's difficult to track where the bullet even is. 
Hmm. Like that is some good that performance. That is actually psychotic. That was almost like a 90 degree. 90 degrees. That's even more extreme than the 45 degree angle we observed moments ago. This is a bullet that could enter the body here and then end up here. Terrifying especially when you compare this type of performance to the performance of its predecessor. Before the 545 by 39 millimeter, Soviet Russia employed the 762 by 39 millimeter round, not to be confused with the 7N6 or poison bullet. Practically speaking, the 545 by 39 round is lighter than the earlier 762, allowing soldiers to carry more ammunition into battle and creating a higher velocity projectile. But let's consider precisely how these older bullets are intended to inflict damage. You notice these two, they're about the same size as far as the casing goes. A little bit smaller bullet, what that's going to give you is a whole lot higher velocity. The earlier 762 design on the right cut a straight path through the target with a later, less effective yaw cycle. This approach is chosen out of necessity in hunting because this larger round carries slightly more kinetic energy and is thus more effective at penetrating thick animal hide and shattering heavy animal bones. In human warfare, it is less erratic, tearing up less tissue inside the target and therefore it is less effective at killing. But as Garen demonstrates, if you need an armor piercing round, perhaps the older 762 would be the superior option. It seems that with a little armor, the poison bullet has met its match. The kinetic energy from the bullet is absorbed somewhat by the armor, with the remaining energy being transferred through the body armor onto a diffused area of the target. That would definitely bruise, and the target would be susceptible to a blunt force trauma injury in the region where the bullet made contact. But no penetration bodes well for overall survivability. Did some crazy stuff like it usually does. It's bulged in the back. We have a sizable bulge there if you want to feel that, Charlie. Okay, that's huge. That is a huge bulge. Excellent observation, Dr. Charlie. So for armor penetrating assignments, the 545 by 39 may be outclassed by its predecessor, the 762 by 39 round. Bullets that behave like the older 762 function best when the penetration is followed by a mushroom expansion effect. We have accomplished some big stuff here, you guys. This thing mushroomed. It is beautiful. For this effect, the front of the bullet has a thin jacket and a typically lead alloy core. It leads to bullets whose tip deforms, flattening and expanding in diameter in the process. There's a big mushroom sitting right here, guys. This design, properly implemented, allows for effective damage at close range and high velocity, as well as at longer range kills and lower velocity. As it expands, the bullet slows down quicker than bullets that do not mushroom, causing the energy to be imparted more quickly, causing greater shock. Like your insides are getting punched with a tiny metal boxing glove. And a bullet that mushrooms leaves a wider wound cavity, causing greater damage. So far, we've covered bullets that cause damage by yawing unpredictably inside their target, cutting a straight path through their target, expanding like a mushroom inside their target. But there is one more mode of damage to talk about. Bullets that fragment inside their target. Similar to yawing, fragmentation is a devilish display of human engineering meant to maximize internal damage. The US military issue 556 by 39 millimeter M855 round is a good example of a projectile that is more likely to fragment and deal extra damage. It is similar in weight to the poison bullet and may yaw somewhat as well, but ballistic research has demonstrated a much higher fragmentation rate upwards of 50% compared to a fragmentation rate of approximately 18% for the poison bullet. Okay, we got M855 out of the M16. We're gonna see how this performs in the ballistic blocks which we flipped around. A bullet that is designed to fragment breaks apart upon entering soft tissue, literally sending pieces of metal in a random fashion inside the human body. From the slow motion camera, we can tell that the wound profile created by a fragmenting bullet is very frightening. The slug exited through the bottom of the block while bullet fragments exploded around it at what looks to be approximately the 15 to 20 centimeter mark. This is consistent with wound profiles observed by ballistics researchers. This bullet is not intended to exit the body. 
Rather, it is designed to penetrate deep enough to fragment next to your most vulnerable organs. It came in very, very clean, extremely clean. Almost all of the, the petals, if you will, stayed inside here. Uh, what that's telling me is, is you're not going through the, the, uh, the target. Bypassing bone and surface tissue, in a straight path. We can see the entrance of the M855 and you can see it's fairly stable in human tissue up until we have the complete fragmentation of the round. Somewhat Machiavellian. These shards of metal are more than capable of penetrating internal organs and causing critical damage and internal bleeding. Bullets optimized for fragmentation do not depend entirely on yaw for performance, though as we have seen, both methods of damage are viable. The following illustrations demonstrate the difference in projectile performance. No matter which type of bullet you are hit by, the degree to which you are damaged depends on where you are hit within the body. Of particular concern is your head, your major arteries, your vital organs, you know, that sort of thing. If the fragmenting M855 round enters your chest, you put on a bulletproof vest and you took the gun and shot yourself in the chest. Yeah. And fragment severely at a depth of 15 centimeters, you may end up with shards of steel lodged directly inside your heart. Even a bullet like the 7.62, which travels generally straight without fragmentation or yawing, could sever a major artery, putting you at risk of bleeding out in a matter of minutes, or cut a path through your brain matter and render you unable to continue. Dodge this. A bullet in the brain is bad for your computer, in case you were wondering. A bullet that scrambles the insides by tracing a tumbling, curving pattern through the flesh of its targets is also a viable option. If the poison bullet enters somewhere in your mediastinum where many of your vital organs are housed, yawing to create two permanent wound cavities and traveling through your body in an unpredictable manner, you are definitely in grave danger. Yeah, as a medical doctor, uh, you could see the problems begin right here. You heard it here first, folks. Thank you, Charlie, and thank you, Garen, for your video and research. And to be honest, any one of these injury mechanisms seems like much more of a sure thing than a bullet that is actually poisonous. Although, that remains an interesting idea. Given that the projectiles actually contain lead, all bullets are somewhat poisonous if they remain inside you since lead is incredibly toxic. But death is not going to happen immediately if left simply to the actual toxicity of the projectile. Sounds like a topic for more consideration and perhaps another video. How to create an actual poison bullet. Thanks for watching the video and don't forget to see one, do one, and teach one. As always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho.